Hi everybody. Today I get to show you one of the coolest questions I get to show you in the first semester of this geometry class. One of the really best questions in the first semester. Second semester has a lot of really good things, but the first semester has a few, and this is one of them. This is really a nice question. This begins, it says, complete the axis system, the axis system at right and graph these points A and B. So I'm going to graduate this axis system, system and put on a Y axis as well. I just went left and right 10, up and down 10. That's pretty standard. Now I'll show points A and B on that same graph. Now that I've got A and B in place, let's show segment AB. So slide some straight edge across there and let's show the segment AB. We're going to find the perpendicular bisector of that segment AB working in that direction. The perpendicular bisector has really interesting properties. As we begin that, we're going to have to show the process as we find the slope of our segment AB. Now I'll remind you that slope is given by delta Y over delta X between A and B. Start with a Y coordinate on top, I'll go with 4 minus negative 4 over, start with that Y guy, got to start with this X guy, negative 6 minus negative 2. Calculate these things carefully. 4 minus the negative 4 is really 4. Plus 4, we'll call that 8. I see two minus signs on that negative 2. So this is really negative 2 plus, excuse me, negative 6 plus 2. That's a negative 4. We'll always clean up that slope. Write it as a simplified fraction. Bring the negation to the, to the numerator. That would be a negative 2 over 1. So now we know the slope of AB. And a reasonable thing to do would be come over here and check it. Does it look like it's going down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 1? I say, yeah, it probably is. I think we've got the right, right slope. But it's always a good idea to check your, your answers with your graph. And then it asks me to find the midpoint of segment AB. I'll remind you of that midpoint formula. Add up the x coordinates, x sub 1 plus x sub 2, and divide by 2. Add up the y coordinates, y sub 1 plus y sub 2, and divide by 2. I go around thinking that's really the average of the x's, comma, the average of the y's. With these couple of points, that would look like negative 6 plus a negative 2 divided by 2. And for the y coordinate, 4 plus a negative 4 divided by 2. Then we just do some little calculations. And I hope you're thinking with me, negative 6 plus a negative 2, there's a negative 8 divided by 2. That ought to give us a negative 4. And then when I add the y coordinates, 4 plus a negative 4, that's just 0 divided by 2 would be 0. So this tells me that the midpoint should be at negative 4 comma 0. And it's looking pretty good if we went left 1, 2, 3, 4, and up none. You would agree that's the midpoint right there. I might call it M. Not a bad idea, not a big idea, not, a, not an important thought, but that's the midpoint, isn't it? I'll call it M. What, as we go further to find the perpendicular bisector, it asks the question, what would be the slope of a line that's perpendicular to line AB? And I might just decorate that and make that be line AB. And you're thinking, well, if lines are perpendicular, there are things that we should know about their slopes. The slope of, a, of AB is down 2 and over 1, and we want the perpendicular slope. It has to be the negative reciprocal of this fraction, and the negative reciprocal of a negative 2 over 1 would be a positive 1 over 2. I'm going to say that that's the slope M of the perpendicular. The slope of the perpendicular is a positive 1 half. And that's a great way to answer that question. Now here we're getting to the good part. <laughs> Show the process as you find the equation of the line through the midpoint that is perpendicular to our segment AB. And you realize there's the tool for finding the equation of a line. Y minus Y sub 1 equals M times X minus X sub 1. Put those substitutions where they go. This is a question that's going to come back over and over. We're going to practice this thing a bit. You need to use the midpoint as we do this. And the midpoint had coordinates negative 4, comma 0. Clearing that up because it got a little bit hidden there. So I want to go through that point at negative 4, comma 0. That's where we're going through.
through the midpoint. But it's got to be perpendicular. And the slope of the perpendicular? Why? The slope of the perpendicular had to be the negative reciprocal of this, which was a positive one-half. So here goes. I'm going to make those substitutions. Y minus zero, because the y quarter of the point I want to go through is zero, is equal to m, that's a one-half, times x minus the x quarter of the point I want to go through, that's a negative four. A couple simple things to take care of there. I just call that y instead of y minus zero. And think of this as one-half times x plus four. Multiply through those parentheses, and I got y equals one-half x plus two. I think that might be the equation of the perpendicular bisector, which is a big deal in this question. Let's graph it and see if it looks like it does what it should do. It has a y-intercept of two, so we'll march up two places on the y-axis, put a strong point there, and from there we'll follow the slope, up one and over two. Do that a couple times, up one and over two. You can even go down one and left two if you want it, or you can go down two and left four and it takes you right to that midpoint. I'm going to show that line the best I could. And I think it would look like this, just about. Make that line nice and long. That should be the perpendicular bisector of segment AB. Now, what, a, what does a perpendicular bisector do first? Well, it must be perpendicular. That has to be a right angle. And it bisects AB, that is to say, it strikes it at its midpoint. It divides it into two congruent parts. But it has very interesting properties. I'm here to tell you that any point along this line is the same distance from A as it is from B. And I'm going to illustrate that that's true by going through this next step. Show the graph of the perpendicular bisector line, and we just did that. But now, there is a point Z somewhere on that perpendicular bisector. And that point Z has an X coordinate of 6. Find that Y coordinate. So really what we're doing now is thinking there's some line, some point on that line with an X coordinate of 6. And we've got to figure out what the Y coordinate is. How am I going to make that happen? What do you do to make that happen? You might turn that video off and think about it, but I'm going to tell you what to do. This formula that we just did right, that's the formula that tells us what Y would be when we know the value of X. So if we just substitute this value 6 here for x, we're going to find the y value that would be that point on that line. Let's check it. y should be 1 half times, now we're letting x be 6 at this point, plus 2. So that would be y is equal to, and a half of 6 we recognize to be 3, plus 2. So that would be y is equal to 5. So I think that place must have been 6 comma 5. Now let's go check it to see if that fits on the graph. If I were to go to the right, one, two, three, four, five, six, and up one, two, three, four, five. My graph isn't perfect, but it looks pretty good. I'm going to say that's that point Z right there. And here's the interesting thing about that point Z. One of the interesting things about that point Z, I'm going to show the segment from Z to A, and the segment from Z to B. And let you get a good look at that segment, at those segments. And I ask you, which one looks longer, AZ or BZ? And if you're thinking like I'm thinking, they look the same, don't they? And in fact, that is the nature of the perpendicular bisector. Every point along the perpendicular bisector is equidistant from the endpoints of the segment. So that means that AZ and BZ have to be equal in length. Now, show that our point Z is equidistant from the endpoints of segment AB. You'll use the distance formula twice. Let me remind you what the distance formula looks like. It has a square root, and in the first pair of parentheses, x sub 1 minus x sub 2, quantity squared. This is a tough little formula, and it's important that we work it well. And then it's y sub 1 minus y sub 2, quantity squared. We're going to use that to find the distance between a and z. It would do us well to record the, the coordinates of a, and a was at negative 6 comma 4 and z and z we just found to be at 6 comma 5 
So I'm going to find the distance between those two points using this formula. And I'll see what it takes to make that happen. In the first pair of parentheses, the difference in the x's. So we ought to write negative 6 minus 6. And I'm just going to go fill in the blanks for right now. But in a moment, we'll do those calculations. Plus, now looking for the difference in the y-coordinates. These are the y-coordinates. That would be 4 minus 5. Quantity squared. And let's work on that then. A negative 6 minus 6, that's a positive. I mean, that's a negative 12. But I'm going to square it. A negative 6 minus 6 is a negative 12. But when I square it, I get a positive 144. Plus... And when I do this 4 minus 5, that's a negative 1. But a negative 1 squared is a positive 1. And when I add those up, I have the square root of 145. Now, I'll tell you the truth. I don't know much about the square root of 145. But I think it's a little bit more than the square root of 144. So it must be a little bit more than 12. And that's an interesting thought. You know, we might try to measure this, what 12 would look like, and see if this is about that same list of distance. Because I'm saying it's about 12. I think I'll do that in a moment. But right now, let me go ahead and find the distance from B to Z. Let's bring the coordinates of B close by. B was at negative 2, negative 4, and Z was at 6, 5. And we're going to use that distance formula and find the distance between those two points. And I'm thinking it should be the same as this one. So let's hit it with this distance formula and see what happens. And I just make these marks ahead of time before I do the distance formula. Just a couple pairs of parentheses with the exponents of 2. And then I think, well, what's going to go in this pair of parentheses? And what's going to go in that pair of parentheses? And in the first pair of parentheses, we're looking at the difference in the x-coordinates. That'll look like negative 2 minus 6. In the second pair of parentheses, y-coordinate minus y-coordinate, therefore negative 4 minus 5. Pretty good place to be careful. Let's do it inside of those parentheses. A negative 6, a negative 2 minus 6 would be a negative 8. And we're going to square it. And this negative 4 minus 5 is a negative 9. Got to square that too. I'm going to move to the right. And negative 8 squared is a positive 64. Any negative number squared is always positive. And 9 squared is a positive 81. So I'll add up those couple of numbers. And when I do that, I'm adding those up, I get 145, don't I? So I think that distance must be the square root of 145. Now, I'm just going to play around for a second. I want to show you something that I think is kind of interesting to me. I'm saying that those lengths, AZ and BZ, should be the square root of 145, which is a crazy number. But it should be around a little bit more than 12, because I know the square root of 144 is equal to 12. So the square root of 145, this isn't important that I write this, must be a little bit more than 12. Just a little bit more than 12. So I'm going to do a little measurement over here, just, just kind of playing around. And I know from here to here was 10. So if I march two more to the right, that distance to right there between these two places should be 12. I'm going to see if that's how big AZ and BZ were. And I'm thinking it's pretty close, isn't it? That's how big AZ was. And if I move this to this place... And that's how big BZ is also. So I'm thinking, man, we're probably getting this right. I think that was kind of a nice way to measure that. Although the true answer is it's the square root of 105. Both of those were, and they're equal to each other. I think that's kind of a tricky question, so I want to do it again. Same idea. I want to find a point. This time I'm calling it point T. And we know something about that point T. It has an x coordinate of 10. So we're going to fill the, complete the coordinates of that point. And remember, it's on the perpendicular bisector. And we know the equation of the perpendicular bisector was this thing right here. y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. And we're letting x equal to 10. So I'm going to do that on the side. On the line y equals 1 half x plus 2. Now that's the line that is the perpendicular bisector. We're going to let x equal 10. We're going to find out what the y coordinate would be. That would be y equals 1 half times 10 plus 2. A half of 10 is 5, plus 2, yeah, we're going to get y equal to 7, aren't we? So now, this is my point T, and I want to show the distance from A to T and B to T. Now, I'm going to find that place 10, 7, over here 10 and up 7, that's about right here. That's my point T. 
and I'm asking you, what do you think is going to be longer, AT or BT? I'll draw them both. We get a look at them. Here's AT, and here's BT. Now, we aren't proving this. We're just observing this. But in this class, we should prove those kinds of things. Because I bet you're thinking what I'm thinking, that AT and BT look to be congruent, equal in measure. And that would be a nice little thing for us to prove. But right now, we're just going to establish that in this instance that they are equal. Are they always going to work that way? And I would tell you, yeah, it is always going to work that way. But we have not proven it. We're just going to establish that it works in this case. So let me keep those coordinates handy. A was at negative 6, 4. And T, we have just found, by substituting that value of 10 for in for x, we found the y coordinate to have been 7. Y was equal to 7 right there. So T was at 10, 7. And we're going to find the distance between A and T with that distance formula. It's a beautiful thing, but it's a little bit complicated. Make these marks on the paper that will fill in those spaces with the things that ought to go in those places. In the first pair of parentheses, from the formula, the difference in the x-coordinates. That would be negative 6 minus 10. Well, what's going to go in here? And what you, I hope you're thinking is that's the difference in the y-coordinates between these two points. So that would be 4 minus 7. x-coordinate minus x-coordinate. Let's see what that does for us. We'll keep the radical, keep the parentheses because we still got to square stuff. And I get negative 6 minus 10, that'll be a negative 16. But we're going to square it. And then 4 minus 7, that's a negative 3. And we've got to square that as well. Now I know a negative number squared is going to be positive, but 16 times 16, I'm pretty sure that's 256. Hey Alexa, what's 16 squared? 16 squared is 256. Yeah, we got that right. I'm just kidding, but it's nice to have Alexa here, isn't it? And negative 3 squared is going to give us a positive 9. So we get the square root of, this time, 256 plus 9 be 265. I don't know that much about the square root of 265, but we can look at it. Uh, let's just go ahead and get the length of BT. And I hope you're thinking what I'm thinking, that BT should be the same amount as AT should come up to be the square root of 265. And if it isn't, we got to figure out what we did wrong. But I think it will be. Now, to do this distance formula well, we ought to record those points B and T right here. Because people will slip that every time. B was at negative 2, comma 4. And T we found to be at 10, comma 7 in this case. So let's hit those couple of coordinates with the distance formula. Make those marks and then let's fill in those parentheses. I'm looking for the difference in the x coordinates here. That would be negative 2 minus 10. And here I'm looking for the difference in the y coordinates. That would be 4 minus 7. We're going to get different numbers than showed up over here, but I believe in the, in the end, it's going to come up to that same length. Negative 2 minus 10, that's a negative 12. Plus, and 4 minus 7, that's going to be a negative 3. Oh my goodness, I got something wrong here. <laughs> Let's see if we can't figure that out. Pause. If I was to carry this through, I'm not getting the thing I want, and you might know why. I see that I have made an error here. I think that's probably a good thing for me to show you that error. So I'm going to continue and just show you what happened. If I kept on working this direction, I would have got, well, that negative 12 squared would give me 144. And that negative 3 squared would have given me a positive 9. And that adds up to the square root of 153. I don't know much about the square root of 153. But I know it's not the same as the square root of 265. So I did something wrong here. And I had a moment to think about it. And what I did wrong, maybe you can tell me what I did wrong, was that point B, I called it negative 2, 4, when actually it was negative 2, negative 4. 
So I'm going to rework that. I'm going to show you that it was truly the correct amount. But I did make an error, and I hope to avoid those errors in the future. And it gives you a little look at what happens when you make an error. So I'm about to fix my mistake. I found the distance between A and T to be the square root of 265. And because I missed the coordinates on point B, I called it negative 2, positive 4. I, 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 I've screwed this up. But if I, I'm going to try it again. I got B at negative 2, negative 4, where it should have been. And I know that point T was where we found it to be at 10, 7. So I'm going to hit it one more time with that distance formula. And you can make a prediction on what you think I'm going to find. I hope it's going to be that much right there. Here goes with the distance formula one more time. And you see the mistake I made. Try, try to be really careful and avoid those kinds of things. People transpose mis mixed coordinates all the time. Uh, that's why I left my error right here for you to see that mistake. Here we go with the x coordinates. Negative 2 minus 10. And in the y coordinates, the difference in the y's would be negative 4 minus 7. Negative 2 minus 10 is going to give me a negative 12, which I'm going to square. And a negative 4 minus 7 is going to give me a negative 11. Got to square that too. So I get 144 positive and 121 positive. I'll add those up, see what I get. Looks like 100, 265, huh? Yeah, I got the square root of 265, which is a pretty good thing, because I know that this is from T to B needed to be the same as the distance from A to T. And they were both the square root of two, 265, which is a little bit more than 16. So, man, you can avoid those kind of errors, but I made it right in front of you. Try to avoid those errors. Be careful when you write the coordinates down, and then we'll get this stuff right. Thank you, guys. Happy to hear from you.